Hey, welcome to the next episode of Fire Island Catch and Cook. It is September 30th and tomorrow is opening day for whitetail deer on Long Island. I could not be more fired up. This is my second season and since my father-in-law Phil got me into bow hunting last season, my addiction and passion for archery and whitetail deer hunting has completely skyrocketed. Um, super quick shout out to my father-in-law Phil and two of my local buddies here, Joe and Sean. I have spent countless hours on the phone with these guys, uh, smoking cigars in the backyard, shooting the bow, and just really, I, I think learning, I, I think collectively probably 90 to 100 years worth of bow hunting and whitetail deer hunting, specifically on Long Island in suburban areas. Um, and I really think they've prepared me super well Last year, I probably spent about 40 hours, uh, 40 to 50 hours in the stand. I was using a climber and uh, we were in the east end of Long Island. I didn't have, I didn't produce anything. Uh, I had the abs at the time of my life, uh, but I had one opportunity on like a four point buck. He moved in super quick on me. I drew back and I didn't feel confident with, this, with the shot. I didn't want to spine him. Um, I just didn't want that to be my first year experience. Um, but this year I have spent a really long time scouting. I got my Aventon Adventure e-bike and I've been taking my e-bike to a bunch of different public lands and just scouting out. I got some cameras out in the woods and I'm really excited to get on a spot tomorrow that I've just been pinging deer on a daily basis. My goal tomorrow is to get out there just kind of put everything I've been working on into action, let the muscle memory take over. I've been shooting like 60 arrows a day for probably the past three months. My father-in-law originally got me a Bowtech Zion, which is a carbon bow. I've shot the shit out of that thing for probably two years now, and I just upgraded to the Prime RevX. Uh, that's the Prime RevX 2. Went out to Lancaster Archery, those guys hooked me up big time they spent all day with me we paper tuned it shot 200 arrows re-paper tuned it um, I'm running the spot hog fast eddy sights on there QAD drop away rest um, this is a 70 pound bow I've tuned it down to uh, 65 pounds which is perfect for me and I'm really excited to get on this I've now been training with this bow for a couple of weeks and I'm, I'm feeling very confident with it. Uh, I've been shooting 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 yards every single day. And uh, I'm very, very confident within 30 yards. I got the Lone Wolf Custom Gear mobile hunting setup with, uh, with double step um, sticks, 17 inch cableators, and the, I believe this is the 1.5 stand. Don't quote me on that. I'll put a caption on the video. And then I got the, the bag here and I'm running um, the Sitka Elevated 2 camo, which I got all over here, my lacrosse boots, and, uh, and this chest pack. So I'm keeping it super light. I'm really, uh, Sean and, and Joe have really kind of, are, they're grooming me to be a, a true mobile hunter. And I'm really excited about all the strategy that we're putting into how I'm gonna target these deer. I also have this trailer which I, which hooks up to my e-bike. Um, this opens up, you can put a carcass on it. And uh, tomorrow my plan is not to take my e-bike in. I'm, I'm probably about three quarters of a mile to a mile to my spot. And I'm just gonna hoof it in uh, super early tomorrow morning. If I get a kill, I'll go back and get the, um, get the trailer and use it as a hand cart. I think the last thing that's worth noting for anyone interested in the arrows that I'm using, um, I got the gold tip force. They're pretty cool. They're 300 spine. They have 100 grain brass inserts in them with 125 grain. Uh, this is a field tip right here, but I got fixed blade broadheads. Um, this arrow is about 400, I'm sorry, 510 grains all in. So it's a, a little bit of a heavier arrow. Um, I'm loving them. And uh, Joe and, and Sean have both been very adamant on uh, Focusing on penetration, some heavier arrows, and and I've been I've been working working that into my whole setup. So I'm really excited to get out there. We'll see what happens tomorrow, and uh, 
I can't wait to get into uh, the whole process of this. I feel like my whole journey is shifting now from all this preparation, making sure that I'm a really good shot. Now I'm transitioning that into actually doing the hunt. And, uh, and then if I, get, if I get lucky enough, we get on a, you know, get on a deer, then we're gonna move that into how to field dress, uh, butcher, and then we're gonna look into some super cool recipes for everybody. I will see you at probably around 3.30 tomorrow morning, and we are gonna head out into the woods solo. I hope I get on something good for you guys. See you at the spot. AM. Let's get this done. Yeah. I mean, the amount of deer that I'm passing is outrageous. If that's not a sign, I don't know what is. All right, I'm out here in the east end of Long Island. I'm getting ready to hike out. Video quality probably won't be great. A couple things to note, it's been raining the past couple of days. It just stopped. Today we have a northeast wind. So I'm set up with my stand um, with the wind in my face where I've set up my cameras. I've been kind of patterning these deers and I'm a deer and I'm getting does moving in from the northeast um, pretty much every morning. So if I can remain quiet, I should have them coming in. Today, uh, I'm, I'm here for whatever happens. Uh, I'm gonna start small and move my way up, so. I'll see you all out of the spot. Looks like we got like a foot of penetration. Yeah, my, my, that arrow is concerning me. What, it looks like that insert like exploded on me. It did. Everything's gone. It looks like, I don't know, it might have hit bone on that shot, to be honest with you. Um, how, how is it? Is there any blood? Yeah, there is. It, yeah, it, there's penetration, but if the if the blades exploded, then this is not good. But oh. um, yeah, you, there's there's how, blood. How it's spotty. It, spotty. Yeah. Can you follow that track? Can you follow the blood trail? I don't have blood. I don't have a blood trail, and the ground is soaked, so everything's dark. It doesn't stand out. Shit. All right, I'm uh, I'm gonna head out there. I would I would um, I try to pick up a blood trail. Okay. 
I would try to pick up a blood trail for as far as you can find it. Okay. Um, and then, you know, start walking in the direction. If, if you can, just stay behind the blood trail. Don't, don't like, if, if you're trying to stay off to the side of it, you know, in other words, like, yeah. don't, don't stand directly on top of it. All right, bye. I found blood trail. Looks like my old scrape. That's about 200 yards at least and around all this thick stuff. So uh, I started to feel like I was ready to give up on this thing. Um, it looks like I, I hit her humerus and uh, I did get like 12 inches of penetration on uh, the arrow though. So I am going to continue following this blood trail. Uh, Sean's gonna start out here also. Give me a hand looking, so to be determined here. What's up, bro? It's my staff. <laughs> nice. I haven't been back here in like 10 years. Oh, uh, that's funny. So our blood trail starts back over there. And I was just on the other side of this thicket. I was about two to three hundred yards on the other side of that thicket. I was ready to like give up on the whole thing. So this blood trail, it goes I followed it all the way back into that thicket over there. And then we can follow it. I put sticks so I can show you the whole course of the blood. So we got we got a nice spill right there. Here, here, it's over here. Yeah. Right there. This is where it gets interesting. My trail splits. So he comes around, or she comes around this tree. She pops out over here, or she comes around over here. Right, yeah, it's decent size too. So I don't know if she went that way or this way. I went and cut around all this thicket to see if she was in there. I think that would make sense to me. Oh yeah, God, nice. Good find, bro. I'm glad you came out of here. It's, it's so funny because I walked up here just like looking around. I must have been right. Oh, you got some right here, Sean.
I definitely had a rough first day. Oh my god, I'm rough. <laughs> it has been a hell of a day for uh, opening season. I had that situation with the doe this morning and Sean and I just realized that the broadhead, uh, the wasps, wasp just completely blew up. So um, I got on him really at, at the last minute and uh, he was right kind of near where that other buck came in, the much bigger buck. And I am just, uh, I'm thrilled. Sean, thank you so much for putting me on my first buck. And this has been, this has been such a hell of a day. So uh, Sean's gonna actually walk us through how to field dress it because it's pretty late. Hopefully after Sean shows me, uh, I'm able to do it in the future. And um, we're gonna throw it in the dry age freezer and we're gonna get on some really good meals. This, this deer's gonna feed my family, for, family and friends for a long time. So holy shit, hell of a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks man. Cheers. Cheers. We just dragged the deer up and we got Sean's truck here for just a little bit more light. And uh, Sean, why don't you walk us through uh, sure. how to field dress? So, buck, you're gonna wanna pay, especially if this is gonna get taxed. I mean, you wanna be a little bit more careful. Uh, when you make a cut down here, you don't really wanna come up too far in the breastplate because uh, you'll mess up the hide. So, this deer's got a beautiful cape on it. First thing we're gonna do. Okay, I got my leg kind of hooked. Yep. Uh, grab the rectum and kind of cut around it. Make a circle around the rectum there. You're gonna kind of feel with your knife. Same thing, you're gonna make a circle. Um, cutting the connective tissue, being careful not to cut the actual intestine or the, you know, the tract. So that's done. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna make an incision um, a slight, really small, just kind of getting the hair incision, not puncturing the stomach. There's actually a few layers of skin here. Um, you want to just get through the outside layer so that you could determine where the stomach lining is. And with this Havilon, you see? Yep. Now I'm, now I'm at the stomach. Okay. So that's actually the stomach lining. So I'm going to make, I'm going to turn my knife and make an incision this way. Um, so I'm kind of just working and with the, with the male deer you want to, with any deer, you want to keep the genitalia uh, in case you get stopped. That is that is the law. I like to make this cut up here um, just so that I'm not near the stomach. And I'm going to make a little slice right there. See that how close yeah. the intestine yeah, the intestines yeah, yeah. are to the bottom yeah. of the ear. So you want to be really careful with this. Like I'm depressing on the intestines. Yeah. Uh, so that I'm I'm creating distance for my knife to work. So this is the liver. See right there. Yeah. Now all these organs are connected uh, up by the tenderloins with like a connective lining tissue right here, and that basically has to get cut as well where the lungs were. Bring both hands up in the front of the cavity here. And with my knife, there's the arrow. I'm gonna reach for the esophagus. My hand's on the heart right now. And I like to try to save the heart. Um, Cause it's Tasty. really nutrient rich. Yeah. And uh, this is the heart right here. Oh wow. So what we're gonna do is. So I got him through the lungs. Yeah. I'm gonna cut the heart away, right away. The hearts are falling. All right, the guts out. So liver, lungs, stomach, intestines. This is just fat right here. But I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Cut that connective tissue away. I'll actually tie it off on the other side. But if you do it right, you don't really need to. You make it look very easy. <laughs> Good work. Way to redeem yourself.
take this home and keep it out. Sure. Yesterday, knocked two in six hours and 20 minutes. Bear shafted from standing there, like that bow is so in tune. First, I like to I like to take these off before you put them on the gambrel, because once you do it, just it's really difficult to uh, to get it off. Because you have to you have to work. You have to take this off to get it past. Couldn't have, you couldn't have drawn oh, it up better. Even when you, uh, even when you talked about, um, like your 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 best case scenario, you were like, I kind of want to shoot, like, you know, like, like yeah, start with a smaller box. Small, not that he's small at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, you wanted to shoot a buck first. Yep. Which is cool. So because we're gonna keep this out, we gotta be super careful up here. I'm gonna smoke this Opus X undefeated and let Sean go to town on keeping this thing out. Good work. That's your buck back there. Looks pretty good, man. Looks great. Really nice aging. Good rind on it. You're keeping it above freezing, and basically all it's doing is kind of tenderizing the meat. The enzymes break down, and also it allows me some time to not have to rush into butchering, which is always nice when it's early season, it's 70 degrees out, and we're, you know, trying to rush to get a deer cut up, whereas I could put it in here for 14, 21 days. And when I have time, I come back and, and take my time. Perfect. With the All right, let's get this. Let's get All this right, guy out of here. So I bet you we lost some weight. Uh, yeah, so from evaporation on here. So a ton of the moisture content comes out. Five, probably five to ten percent of the weight of the of Got what it. went in there is Got coming it. out. This rind, a lot of this is going to get cut away, but behind that is meat that's be protected by the outer skin. So we're gonna butcher this deer up and then we're gonna prepare a meal. Uh, what are we eating tonight? So what we're gonna do is probably my favorite cut. It's gonna be the back strap, but we're gonna do a French rib roast. Basically, the back strap goes all the way up into the neck, all the way down into the rump. But we're gonna focus on basically where the ribs start. And that's gonna be the cut we're gonna eat tonight. The muscle groups after dry aging for the, for you know 20 days or wherever we were near, 
the muscle groups really like to detach from each other really exactly. easily because all that connective tissue has really been broken down in the in the process of just keeping it above clear, above freezing. So first thing I like to do is I like to take this shoulder off. Now there's really nothing that attaches this. This is all ligature that attaches a, a front shoulder. So I'm just going to work my knife around that and this is going to just pop off super easy. So that's one shoulder off. Any type of braise or any type of slow cooking in a crock pot, this is going to really excel. You can actually feel your broadhead right here. Oh wow. <laughs> right here, there's a like a pelvic bone. But this pelvic bone is going to separate what I consider like my hindquarter to my back strap and forward. So we're going to kind of just take our knife and feel around that. And make an instant cut right there and we're going to go around the pelvis. So little ball joint in here that's going to separate this and the entire butchering process outside about two things takes place with a knife there's no need to have anything but a knife i want my my meals when they go into the freezer i want them to be basically ready to cook i don't want to be doing any secondary butchering See that just muscle groups just gonna fall apart um any secondary butchering later on So this is like a pretty good amount of trauma on this side. We're gonna lose quite a bit of meat here. That's why you shoot for the shoulders um, up in the front. This is that vital V that you wanna shoot for is right in here. Because this scapula comes right up in here. Um, and that's to protect the vitals. If you look at that, two things are kind of important. When a deer is gonna drop, right? They're gonna hunch down. And what happens when they hunch down is this compresses and the scapula actually goes down, protecting the vitals. So that's something you want to think about. That's why I like to aim a little bit lower, because that scapula is going to move down and protect the vitals. If you aim behind this point, especially with a heavy broad head, you know, a heavy arrow setup, you're going to basically go right through this muscle and then into what would be the heart right here. So this is the exit on the other side. So that actually exit was perfect. The entry was high, which what 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 it why it hit his spine. You kind of can separate the back strap into, into three parts. This would be like the top loin, or, or the loin tip, I should say, and that's less tender than when you get to here. This stuff is really really tender, really good. And we're just gonna make a cut all the way down to that last rib. I'm gonna just work along the back of the rib cage, just like you would fillet a fish. I'm gonna work right along this, the spine there. Go. What we're basically be eating is a French rib roast, so we're going to French all these ribs now. So I'm just going to kind of make a cut like this. And I'm just going to follow the fat lines. And we'll work to about there. It gets really difficult once you get up into here, into the chest, you know, the front of the chest cavity. along our rib line there, like a chopping knife. Use an ax for this. And all we're doing is just separating those ribs from the spine. I kind of like to stop it right here, and then I'll grind that little section. That's the rib that broke. That is a beautiful cut, look at that. So now we have basically a standing rib roast, and we're gonna clean these up, clean all this tissue off the backside so that it cooks real nice, and. There's none of this tissue. We could actually slice it, uh, each individual rib, and it's a really nice presentation. Your neck roast. And this is gonna be probably my, maybe my favorite cut of meat. If you braise this, it is absolutely phenomenal. So that, this whole roast, that'll be just like, you know, basically a meal right there. And then, Whatever I can glean off this will become grind. It's broke right at the back of the insert. Yep. We're just gonna clean up primal cuts that we have already on the table. You see that color, that's from the dry aging. You'll get this like really reflective surface from the meat being so tender.
some barbacoa tacos with that. difference in meat color. Yep. Isn't that crazy? It's obviously you can just follow all the ligature. It's super easy how easy it comes apart. And then just separate. That's basically the eye of round right there. I think. Buddy! Sirloin. This would be the tri-tip right nice. here. My assistant gunner here. Yeah. He's been asking to see this deer for since it went in the fridge. So we're gonna take the sirloin off there. Sirloin's gonna be really good. Yeah, I see the bone. You see the bone? Yeah. Yeah, it's a femur. Yeah. This is gonna be good sliced crossways into steaks and then seared. This should be the bottom round. How was school today, buddy? Good. Were you good today? Looks like a good dog bone right here. Yeah, that's perfect. Smoke that, jack loop that right up. Boom. We're all butchered up. We're all butchered up. All right, so we got a pretty good yield here. Got a bunch of different cuts. I'm keeping this, this whole leg, and I'm going to kind of treat it like a corned beef uh, or pastrami. Gonna brine it with spices and frog salt, uh, wet brine. I'll probably smoke it and then finish it in a steam bath. So you'll have to stay tuned for a later video for that. And we have our grind and cube pile and then all these other cuts. So we're gonna start to vacuum seal it. We'll check back in a couple minutes. Coat this. A little bit of uh, avocado oil. It's KJ oh, Grips. Oh, that's uh, it's a wrong cruiser. I'm just gonna coat this with a little bit of oil. This chosen stuff is kind of the best uh, avocado oil I've found. So I like to go pretty heavy. Coat it all sides. What I like about this dish is we're keeping it super simple. Just throwing on some avocado oil, some Celtic salt. We got the Traeger going up to. 225, we're at 213 right now. And then Sean's gonna whip up some chimichurri and the potatoes are soaking in water. I'm just gonna slice it. They've been in, uh, in the water for uh, maybe 30 minutes, an hour, trying to bring starch down, out, and uh, now we're gonna roast them. Rosemary. Gonna put some tallow in here. Don't tell the girls. <laughs> and we'll wag them Yes, sir. <laughs> what? Yes, I do. All right. So we got an internal temperature of 101. We are gonna pull it off and make some chimichurri. Hand chop because if you uh, cut the parsley, uh, if you like throw it in a food processor or something like that, it's just gonna emulsify it and turn it all green and you're not gonna get any like nice chunks. So. Throw this in the fridge. It's actually smell really good. Throw some tallow. We'll get the we'll get this smoking pretty hot because we're not trying to heat up the meat. We're just trying to crust it. Put this grill in yesterday, so I don't know really don't know shit about <laughs> it, but I might throw the infrared on. We'll see. Katie, Felicia's got those things in her Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. I've never like, worn them in public. <laughs> She's got the things on her never. Crocs. Never. You know, it's I'm a flower. You're my garden. Okay. <laughs> so we're riffing right now.
we'll pull that in like 15, 20 seconds, we're gonna pull that. Hi, Quinn. I've had four beers at this point. Five beers, no, maybe more. Maybe five, six beers. I'm just making a little herb butter, a little garlic, rosemary thyme, the trifecta. Oh. That's a money shot right there. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care how many beers you have. <laughs> I mean, the temperature feels. Pray it looks perfect. It feels perfect. Yeah. Pull it. Butter on that. Salt. Moment of truth. Perfection. Oh, money. Perfection. Congrats. Yeah, thank you very much, man. That's it. Thank you, Sean. Cheers. Cheers. So, everyone knows Felicia, our favorite taste tester. We have a new taste tester, Katie. And uh, we both realized that every time we go hunt, actually, I have a question for everyone else, which is if you go hunting or fishing, when you get home, has something changed in your house, whether it be furniture, pictures on the wall? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Paint anything. That's a perfect cook. I'm just gonna go in and kind of lollipop this. Yeah, lollipop. Thing. Oh my god. Yeah, daddy, yummy. Yummy is right, dude. Is it good, daughter? That's really good. I will good, babe. This is incredible. Very good. That's good. This is also my first year. Which is. Oh, you killed this. In the spot that I killed my first year. Which is awesome. That's pretty wild. Cool. You gotta go back and get that that big buck that was there, which I know. I'm sure like... I won't. <laughs> Cheers, dude. That is so good. Cheers, man. Very good. Thank you so much. It's really good though. That, not it not really for good. the camera. But that, I love how you got the crust on it. Right. The vinegar. You should that. Kind of kills any like gamey taste that you might like. That's why I like this meal for like first timers. Absolutely. Because there's they, nothing gamey. The, no, absolutely not. That's, those that deer was eating acorns four minutes before you killed it. <laughs> Get in there, dude. Nice. There you go, bud. How is it? Good. This is good practice for the only couple of things after after having like one one full one and then going into this one that smoke which is on like the like when I got close to the bone I really picked up a lot what, what kind of pellets were you using on that that's hickory hickory it's kind of like perfect it's not overpowering either no it's you don't want to use like, like a brisket. mesquite or something like that where it tastes you're not trying to let it's just a little bit of smoke flavor you're not trying to overpower sure, yeah. and honestly you can do the same thing in the oven it's really just the trigger's a little bit better, maybe like a minuscule amount. Yeah. You could do the same thing in the oven. I like a little bit of smoke flavor in the beginning and then hit it with a really hot sear because you get that crust on the outside and it's just like awesome. This is fire. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's delicious. And it's I'm simple. so glad I have two more of these racks. <laughs> I gotta go kill another deer. If you enjoyed our video, you wanna see something else, like, subscribe, the whole nine. Sean, thank you so much, dude. You crushed this meal. Got me on my first buck. I appreciate it. Anytime. Peace.